So in the bromination of propane, a whopping 97% of my products is in the form of 2-brom propane and only 3% of it is in the form of 1-brom propane. Now this is actually really interesting because if we compare it with the corresponding chlorination reaction, then in chlorination, both of these products are more 50-50. The 2-chlor product is only slightly higher at 55%. Now do note that in both these cases, the second degree product is the major product and this is because it's much easier to break these second degree carbon hydrogen bonds compared to breaking these first degree hydrogen bonds as this will lead to the formation of a more stable second degree radical compared to a first degree radical. In fact, it's been experimentally found out that while it requires 98 kilocalories to break each of these bonds, it only requires 95 kilocalories per mole to break these ones. So therefore in chlorination, even though it's more likely for the chlorine radicals that are formed to collide against these first degree hydrogen atoms as they are more in number, but because it's much easier to break these bonds, it's much easier to form a second degree radical compared to forming a first degree radical. So therefore ultimately a greater number of second degree radicals are formed in the course of the reaction which ultimately makes the 2 chloro product the major product, right? Now even in bromination, we have the same number of first degree and second degree hydrogen atoms compared to chlorination and even out here it requires the exact same 95 kilocalories to break these bonds and 98 kilocalories per mole to break these ones. So even in bromination, we should expect the 1 brom product and the 2 brom product to be in the same 45 is to 55 ratio, right? So what's really going on out here? Let's find out. Now before we move forward, I'll give you a little hint. The only thing that's different between these two reactions is actually the nature of the bonds that are being formed rather than the nature of the bonds that are being broken, right? So if we dig in deeper, that in chlorination and even in bromination, even though the energy that is required to break these carbon hydrogen bonds is the same in both the cases, but the energy that is released is different in both these cases, right? HCl is a much stronger bond compared to HBr. 103 kilocalories per mole of energy is released during the formation of HCl but only 87 kilocalories is released by the formation of HBr. So therefore, in the formation of first degree radicals via chlorination, while 98, while 98 kilocalories is required to break these bonds, 103 kilocalories is released by the formation of these bonds. So ultimately in this process, 5 kilocalories of energy will be released, right? Similarly, in the formation of second degree radicals, 8 kilocalories of energy will be released. It's slightly higher as breaking this second degree carbon hydrogen bonds requires lesser energy. But ultimately, formation of these carbon radicals via chlorination is exothermic, right? It's exothermic. On the other hand, if you look at bromination, while 98 kilocalories is required to break this bond, only 87 kilocalories is released by the formation of an HBr bond. So this reaction, as well as this one, both of these reactions are endothermic, right? So while formation of these carbon radicals via chlorination is exothermic, in case of bromination, it's endothermic and this and this as we'll see in this video for the high selectivity of bromination compared to chlorination. Now to understand the relationship between endothermicity or exothermicity with selectivity, we need to look at the energy profile of the reactions. Now I'm sure you must have come across these kind of diagrams, these energy diagrams earlier, but let's do a quick recap of the most essential points. 
So let's say we have some reactants A2 and B2 and these reactants react to form some products let's say 2 times of AB. Now chemical reactions most of the time don't happen automatically but instead they first need to cross an energy barrier which we call the activation energy. Activation energy. So let's say if we have uh, some A2 molecules and some B2 molecules in a container then these molecules will not spontaneously convert into my products but only if they collide with the proper orientation and proper energy only then some new bonds can get broken some new bonds can get formed and old bonds broken and only then we'll get our products right Now this state in which new bonds are getting formed and old bonds are broken this is the most energetically unfavorable state these reactants can find themselves in and this is what we call the transition state. So once the energy of the reactants in other words we can say that when the energy of the reactants reaches the energy of the transition state the reaction trips over to form the products. Now it turns out that in exothermic reactions like this one in which we have a chlorine radical abstracting a hydrogen atom from propane to form a first degree radical. In this kind of reactions in which there is a decrease in energy. In such reactions the transition state of the reaction is achieved early into the reaction. On the other hand in case of endothermic reactions in which there is an increase in energy going from the reactant to the products in, on the, in endothermic reactions the transition state of the reaction is achieved late into the reaction. So what does being early and being late mean and what are the consequences? To understand let's think about a chlorine radical trying to abstract a hydrogen atom from a carbon hydrogen bond. In fact, let me first talk about a bromine radical. Let me take a bromine radical. It will be much easier to explain and then we'll come to the chlorine radical. Now, if you recollect, chemical bonds are not static, right? They keep vibrating. So this carbon hydrogen bond is actually vibrating. So this bonds like vibrating and as it vibrates, as these atoms move further away, See, every single time I try like forcing myself to do this. Okay. Okay, so so this is like, this is a very bad representation of a bond vibrating. But let's imagine this bond vibrates and if it, if it vibrates, it's going to move further away, right? So if it moves further away, then, then this will actually start developing this radical character, right? It won't be like fully formed radicals. Uh, but there will be some radical character that's getting developed. Now, if there are, if there weren't any bromine radicals or anything else, then this bond will vibrate. It will develop some radical character. It can, it can never like totally break because if it breaks, then we have two reactive species and both of them will combine with each other. So basically, the bond will keep vibrating. However, in the presence of some external reactive agent like say a bromine radical there can be a new bond formation between these two electrons right so this is how the bond is getting abstracted i get you get the picture of how a new bond formation happens now what happens is that if we if we do bromination let's come back to bromination so if we do bromination uh these bromine hydrogen bonds that will get formed these bromine hydrogen bonds are not as strong as these carbon hydrogen bonds right that's why this reaction was endothermic the amount of energy that was released by this bromine hydrogen bond was uh, lower than the energy that was required to break this bond so these are like weaker bonds so therefore a bromine radical will only abstract a hydrogen atom from from a carbon hydrogen bond it will only abstract that when this bond has like vibrated far enough when this bond is like really really weak 
only then the bromine will even start to interacting with this hydrogen atom okay so this means that uh, in this reaction this transition state which we had talked about earlier this transition state is reached right before the radical formation right so we can in fact go ahead and draw it out here this this transition state is actually formed right before the radical formation the radical right before the radicals almost form that's where you get your transition state so that's why this transition state is late and one important thing that you should also note out here is that the energy of this transition state is pretty similar to the energy of the product that we get because because the radical is this is almost formed right when the bromine radical starts interacting with it okay now on the other hand if you come to chlorination as you have seen uh chlorine hydrogen bonds if we talk about chlorination then this chlorine hydrogen bonds are far stronger far stronger than carbon hydrogen bonds the reaction is in fact exothermic so therefore because chlorine forms really strong bonds with hydrogen so it doesn't even wait for this bond to vibrate and reach its like uh breaking point it starts reacting it pretty much pretty much starts reacting with this bond right away so therefore so therefore the transition state in chlorination is is early and because the chlorine radical pretty much starts reacting right away so the energy of this transition state is pretty close to the energy of the reactants okay so therefore generally generally let me get rid of all this stuff if you have understood all this so generally in uh, exothermic reactions the transition state is early and more importantly the energy of the transition state the energy of the transition state is closer to that of the reactants to that of reactants rather than the products on the other hand in endothermic reactions because the transition state is late it's formed just before the products get formed so the energy of this transition state energy of transition state is closer to products okay so now if we look at chlorination so in chlorination we had chlorine radicals abstracting hydrogen atoms we get either a first degree hydrogen atom or a second degree hydrogen atom and chlorination we have seen was exothermic so it's exothermic this is our propane and because it's exothermic so the energy of the products will be lower so this is the most stable product this is energy so this is out here while the first degree product will be less stable so it's going to be out here right now if we draw the energy diagram the transition state of uh, the transition state of both of these reactions are going to be early because both of them are exothermic so the energy of both of these transition states the energy is going to resemble that of the reactants so the energy of the transition state of both these paths are going to be pretty similar right pretty similar energy of ts on the other hand if we talk about if we talk about bromination bromination was endothermic it was endothermic so this time um if you look if we draw our energy diagram again so we have energy versus time so we have our propane out here and it's an endothermic reaction right so these things are going to be higher up out here so and the first degree radical is like less stable so it's going to be higher in energy compared to the second degree radical so let's say that their energies are out here 
now because this is endothermic so the the transition state is going to resemble the products right so in this case the transition state the energy of the transition state will resemble the energy of this one while in this case the energy of the transition state will resemble this so the energy profile is going to look like this right now if you like let's let's look at our chlorination and bromination once more so in chlorination because it was exothermic so the chlorine radicals pretty much started reacting with the started like reacting with the carbon hydrogen bond right away uh, so the transition state resembled that of the reactants so in both these pathways the both these pathways have pretty similar transition state but in bromination the transition state is late um, the bromine radical starts react starts interacting with the carbon hydrogen bond right before the radical formation so the transition state was late so as you can see uh, the activation energies in both these reactions are pretty close to each other right while the activation energies out here are quite different so therefore in chlorination both of these reactions because they have pretty much similar activation energies so both of this reaction formation of the first degree as well as the second degree radical will have the same will not the same but similar rate while in bromination there is going to be a sharp difference in rates between these two reactions because the second degree radical formation is energetically more favorable so there will be a much lower activation energy which will make the formation of second degree radical much faster compared to the first degree radical so therefore in chlorination this was supposed to be the conclusion so therefore in bromination uh 97% of our products is in the form of 2 bromopropane bromination is much more selective towards the second degree product while in case of chlorination it's it's this is cl uh, it's it's more 50 50 it's 45% and 